Well, hey everyone, and welcome back to the channel. I'm Matt, I'm a wildlife and nature photographer based in Northern California. And today we're gonna to be talking about the XS20 camera from Fujifilm. This little guy I picked up about a month ago and I really like it. So I'm gonna give you the five things I love about the camera, the five things I don't love about the camera, and we'll hop into it. Okay, so for these types of reviews or even just commentary, I do think it's important for the photographer to share a little bit about what their perspective is, perhaps so you can relate to me and understand what I'm bringing to the discussion. So I'm primarily a wildlife photographer and I primarily shoot Canon. So I shoot the Canon R5 and a big telephoto lens like this, the um, EF 500 millimeter F4 lens. This kit and this application, it's pretty niche. I mean, if you think about it, there aren't that many forms of photography where you need a very high shutter speed, a wide aperture, and um, a lot of croppability because you're shooting really small subjects. So that's a bit of my background. I'm familiar with the Canon systems. I use them extensively. So I know what autofocus can be when using a Canon. But for everything else, I've shot a mix of Canon and Fuji. So I had a Fuji X-T30. I've used that for about a year. I primarily use that with the XF 27F 2.8, which I use for street photography. And I really love the combination. I love the tactile feel of Fuji. I love the color science. I love the images you get out of it. I love having a non-anti-aliasing filter on the, on the sensor. So there's a lot of things I really like about Fuji already coming into this, but I haven't used Fuji and that camera in particular for things like human portraits, my kids, my friends and family. Um, I didn't feel comfortable using the XC30 because the eye autofocus was just not in the same ballpark as the Canon R5. And so I just pick up the Canon R5 to do anything around people or anything where I needed eye autofocus because I always felt that was better. So that's kind of where I'm coming from with this discussion, of the five things I like and five things I don't. It's with that background in Canon and Fuji and shooting a range of subjects, but primarily shooting wildlife photography. So let's get into it. Here are the five things I love about this camera. All right, so the first thing is I love the form factor of this camera. It's basically exactly the right size for me for what I need it to be. I want it to be large enough to fit all of my fingers on the camera, but not too large that I feel like the body has to be, you know, large, too large to fit in a pocket, too large to carry with me and becomes cumbersome. So when I bought the camera, I felt it and I thought, immediately this is a bit small. Now I'm 6'3", I have kind of like large hands, particularly large palms. And so it didn't sit super well when I held the body. So what I did is I bought the small rig L bracket, which is really designed for like things like landscape photography because it has a Arca Swiss um, compatible tripod mount on the bottom. But what I did is I removed the L piece. This is something I saw off like a Facebook group, really smart idea. You just unscrew the L here and you just have the base plate. And the base plate is just really well designed. It's gorgeous. Like look, look at the side here where you can see, you know, that's the, that's the bracket right there. So it comes really nicely off. It's like tapered. It follows the same form of the, of the XS20 and it sits really nicely on the camera and provides just a little bit of extra length, which is what I needed to feel comfortable. It doesn't obstruct the battery chamber or the SD card chamber because it has this little wing that pops out and allows you to, to change the battery. So, you know, all things told, I really like the form factor. That grip that you see there is like really awesome when shooting larger lenses, like for example, the Viltrox um, 75 1.2 lens, which is a pretty big lens for Fujifilm, but it feels fine on this camera body. And I haven't had any issues at all. Now this is again coming from a full frame camera setup, so I have kind of a different mentality with this, but I found this form factor to be really great for my needs. So the next thing that is something I really like about this camera is the 26 megapixel sensor. Now the sensor is great. I mean, Fujifilm sensors have a, they do have a special kind of color to it. I love the way it handles highlights. I guess it's a little bit of the processor as well, but it's just a lovely sensor. It's very sharp and really tried and true and tested in the previous generation of cameras. However, it's 26 megapixels. So you might be saying to me, don't you want the 40 megapixel X-T5 or X-H2? And the answer is not really, because for things like wildlife, I love having that crop ability and being able to really crop into a subject. But for everything else, which is what I use this camera for, things like cityscapes, you know, like I talked about portrait photography of my kids, it's not actually that important to have a high megapixel sensor. In fact, I kind of like having the smaller one. The files are smaller. 
Um, they're also potentially a little bit um, better performing with the processor. So this is sort of like a nuanced point. And I haven't had a chance to test this. So Fuji, if you want to lend me an X-T5, would be very happy to accept it to do this test. But the thing is that this camera and the X-T5 and the X-H2, well, they all use the same processor, the most recent processor available. So when that processor is churning through information coming off the sensor, it's limited to some extent by the amount of information. Obviously, you can't finish reading a book until you finish reading all of the pages, right? Or maybe a better analogy is you can't finish reading a page until you've read all the words on the page. But the Fuji X-S20 uses a 26 megapixel sensor, so there are fewer words on the page. So I think that same capability with the same battery and the same sensor, or the same processor, can get through the information faster for every photo or every scene on this camera than it could for an X-T5. So it wouldn't surprise me if the autofocus is actually a little bit quicker on this camera than it is on the X-T5 or X-H2. Just a theory, but I think there's enough science and physics to back up that theory that it gives me a sense that it's probably accurate. There's also less rolling shutter on this sensor than there is on the X-T5, I think, because it has fewer lines of code to read. So I actually consider that 26 megapixel sensor an asset if you don't have to crop a ton into your images. Next thing I like is the battery. The battery is just really good. I get 1,000 photos, 750, maybe 800 to 1,000 photos every time I use this camera out in the field. That's more than enough for a single battery. And just to give you an example, I'm the same person same subject, same experience, same, you know, weird idiosyncrasies in my shooting style. And I shot the X-T30, which used the previous battery, this rectangular square, like squared off rectangular one. And I use that and I've used this X-H, the X-S20, really messing up all these names. And the thing is, I use three batteries with the old X-T30 and with this, I can just use one on a day out. So I think that tells you all you need to know about whether or not this battery is good enough and also how much improved it is compared to the previous generation of Fuji batteries. So my final point when it comes to the pros of this is just the package of using this updated sensor, I mean updated processor, the really good sensor, the eye autofocus that comes with that processor, um, the form factor of the grip. It's just a really good camera. And I think it, it punches above its weight class in a sense. Very easy and temptation because of the gadgets and the kind of like silly stuff they put on this to some extent to think of this as an intro level or beginner level camera. And it doesn't have weather sealing and some other stuff I'll talk about in the cons. But all in all, with regard to the full package, I actually think it performs exceptionally well. And I wouldn't hesitate to take prof I wouldn't hesitate to be a wedding photographer with this camera body, except for the fact that it only has one card. And I know a lot of wedding photographers like to back up their work with two cards. But other than that, I mean, it really performs exceptionally well. And you're getting that almost pro level quality in terms of the processor and the image quality out of a camera body that costs um, $1,300 or $1,200, depending on what discounts you're eligible for. So to me, it's just a really compelling combination, really great for everything, maybe except for sports and wildlife, at least based on my experience so far, having not tested those applications yet. All right, let's go through quickly the five things I don't like about this camera. All right, first thing is, I don't know about you, but I do like customizable options. The X-T30 had seven different customizable banks, and that meant for me seven different Fuji X Weekly film recipes, which was pretty cool. Or it could also mean different sort of custom settings for different applications. For example, you could have a portrait setting versus with a different film simulation, for example, and a different shutter speed versus something like um, cityscapes where you might want a you know f8 uh, aperture and a different shutter speed and a different film simulation so those custom settings are really nice and this one only has four instead of the seven that would normally come with it and also maybe we'll just stay on that point for a second you know if you look at the um let's see if i can get a focus here yeah, so you see right there, you can see the mode dial. And there's some funny things on that mode dial. There's things like filter and vlog. And, you know, these things are not that useful. And they take up real estate. And they also kind of give it this 
feel that you're not matching the camera capabilities, right? It's maybe um, not the right camera. Maybe it's an entry level camera when you want to use it for other purposes. So I'm not a huge fan of adding those features. It also takes away of other space on the dial. Um, the other thing is the dials in general. You know, this is going to be a main complaint from Fuji folks is that deviates from the style, the design on the XT series where you have the three aspects of the exposure triangle. Um, all featuring on the top of the camera. Now, it is different, and I did like that style. Uh, however, I don't find this to be too limiting, and it's certainly not affecting my enjoyment using the camera. One thing I did to address this is I reprogrammed this, which is the Fuji film uh, simulations, the film simulations on the side here, on the opposite side of the of the of the handhold is another wheel here, and I reprogram that to be exposure compensation. So primarily what I shoot is manual. I use shutter speed on the back wheel, aperture on the front wheel, or I use the lens to adjust aperture, and then I adjust this to do exposure compensation. It does require uh, a two-handed operation, which is annoying, and I do think there are some workarounds I'll talk about in a future video when I talk about options for programming the XH XS20, but, um, in the meantime, you know, it's annoying to have those that different form factor, but it's not prohibitive or it doesn't affect my photography in any real way. The next thing I want to talk about with, with dislikes is the EVF. Now, this EVF is okay. It's not terrible. It's not great. Um, it's somewhere in between. Uh, it's not a super high resolution one, though that doesn't bother me as much. What really bothers me about this is just it does seem to be really sensitive to the angle of your eye. So like if you're looking down versus looking up versus looking straight at it, the image is sort of distorted and specifically the information on the screen, like the exposure information, can sometimes be a little bit hard to see or you just have to adjust your eye's angle to be able to see it properly. I don't love that. It doesn't feel great using the camera. It's particularly an, an issue when you, when you shoot vertically. I think in reality, what I end up doing is I flip the screen, which I won't really talk about as a pro or con it doesn't matter to me that much though I think it will to others I flip it around so it faces the back and I just shoot you know looking at the screen like this and it's actually kind of a nice way to photograph subjects especially human subjects because you can kind of like connect with them and talk with them while you're seeing them in the monitor kind of looking back and forth and um, and it's much easier sort of to connect with your your client or your family member when taking pictures that way. So I don't really mind the EVF being bad, but obviously it would be nice to have a better EVF. I think that's this would be much more of an issue for me if I was shooting sports or wildlife, because in those applications, I really do tend to shoot directly through the EVF. Next thing I don't love about this camera is the bad the button selection on the back. The joystick, it's just it's not, it doesn't feel like the best quality joystick. Um, when you're moving it around, it, it, it just, it feels like it's gonna break off, to be honest with you. And then the thing that really uh, kind of bothers me a little bit is sometimes I wanna access these buttons here, which are the menu button and the back button. And um, I just, I gotta kind of like, um, I gotta kind of like feel really, it's just like there isn't much tactile feeling here. There's no, there's no rub, it's very smooth. There's no kind of like bumps or anything for these buttons. Your finger just sort of glosses over them. It can be a little bit hard to find them. I haven't had any issues with these buttons up here, which I use for back button focusing. Um, but it would be nice also to be able to access the photo playback, to be able to see um, a photo when I want to in the EVF and be able to push a button for that. So, you know, for customizability of buttons, I'd give this like a B. It's okay, it's not terrible, but it's certainly not the same level as like the Canon R5 or some of the pro bodies from Fuji. Okay, and the final thing I wanted to mention there are cons that are kind of annoying for me is it doesn't have any protection for the sensor when you're in the field. So it's become standard on a lot of camera bodies, I think on the upper Fuji bodies as well, to close the shutter when removing the lens. and. Um, this has no protection at all. It doesn't have weather sealing and it doesn't have that shutter uh, closing. And so I, I do hesitate a little bit to take this out in like the rain or for wildlife photography, but that would be, you know, a, a limitation that I would want to mention. And it's something that does concern me a little bit. Um, dust on the sensor is just annoying to clean off. I haven't really had to clean the R5 at all because it's been so good at, at keeping dust off the sensor. And I do love these Viltrox lenses. I have the Viltrox uh, 7512 and 2712. I bought these for my own money. I'm very much looking forward to testing them and sharing the results with you. But I've been shooting them a lot, 
And I do change them a lot because I'm just in different situations and I'm switching lenses. So given that I'm changing lenses a lot, it would be nice to have some sort of protection over the sensor uh, when I'm doing that in the field. So that's my top five reasons why I like it, things I don't like about it. I do wanna share some of the things I didn't mention at all because they are things that are relevant for decision-making if you are using this video for that application. Um, I didn't talk about the flash. Some people are gonna like the flash, some people aren't. Some people won't find it valuable one way or the other. That's me, I don't really care. But there is a really nice, it is like nice to use um, button or really a lever that you can pull to release a built-in flash. Kind of unusual in today's cameras to have built-in flash. So I suppose that is uh, an asset to some people. Another thing it has is built-in image stabilization, so IBIS. Um, I guess that is a pretty cool asset. It's something I would expect to be pretty standard at this point, but there are camera bodies like the Canon R8, which are even in a higher price bracket. It's, it's $1,500 for that camera that don't have um, IBIS. So, you know, the fact that this does have IBIS and that it does perform well with the lenses, yeah, that's a win, I would say. And, and it's something that uh, is a virtue of the camera body, particularly if you're shooting any video or, um, or anything that requires a slower shutter speed. Another thing that folks have talked about is the vlog feature. Um, I mentioned it earlier. I don't find that to be particularly valuable, but I think for some people who are just really entry level, they might actually find that valuable. All it's doing is it's adjusting the aperture on the camera to be the widest aperture possible and giving you a couple other functions on the back panel here, uh, the touchscreen that you can activate if you're doing a certain type of photography or looking for a certain look. But to me, um, yeah, probably not a super big win and not particularly valuable or even much to note. Um, so yeah, those are kind of the other factors on the camera that I didn't talk about. If I were to sum it all up, it's basically like a mid to top tier capable camera that's packaged in a lower tier camera body in order to save a lot of money and to give the consumer a really great product at a relatively low cost. And for my applications, I, I kind of love it. I mean, I love the colors I'm getting out of this thing. I love using it in the field. I bring it with me much more now than I bring the Canon R5, which I use still for the wildlife photography piece, but not much else. And I'm starting to really trust it after over a month of using it and using it pretty intensely with a lot of different applications, particularly portraits. So that's my take. I'd love to hear what you care about um, because if you share with me, I can cover it in the future with videos about this camera. I'm looking forward to doing more videos on the Fujifilm equipment in general because I just enjoy using it. So let me know what you think. And please, if this video was useful to you, do like it and subscribe to the channel if you wanna see more content. It really helps me kind of grow the channel and feel like this is valuable content to produce because it does sometimes take quite a lot of energy to produce it, even though it may not be the highest production value content available on YouTube. Like for example, this is the third time I've recorded this because the first two times I messed up the audio recording because I'm an idiot. So anyway, that's what I got for you today, uh, this week. Please, uh, you know, have a great week, get outside, don't forget to do stuff that's physically active, and I will talk to you later and see you in the next video.